Hi, welcome to Bookworm Jen, where we are reading through the Luna Chronicles, and we are on book one, Cinder, by Marissa Myers. We are on chapter 12. Prince Kai watched through the class as a medroid inserted an IV into his father's arms. Only five days has passed since the Amber has shown the first signs of the blue fever, but it felt like a lifetime. Years worth of worry and anguish rolled into so few hours. Dr. Erling had once told him of an old suspicion that bad things always came in threes. First, his android Nancy had broke before she could communicate her findings. And now his father was sick with no hope of survival. What would happen next? Would, what could be worse than this? Perhaps the Lunars would declare war. He cringed, wanting to take back the thought the second he had it. Gontorin, his father's advisor, and the only other human allowed to see the Emperor in such a state, clapped a hand on Kai's shoulder. It would be all right, he said without emotion, in that peculiar way he had of reading another person's thoughts. Kai's father moaned in open, swollen eyes. The room was quarantined on the seventh floor of the palace research wing, but the emperor had been made as comfortable as possible. Numerous screens lined the wall so he might enjoy music and entertainment, so he might be read to. His favorite flowers has been brought in droves from the gardens. Lilies and chrysanthemums filling the otherwise sterile room. The bed was dressed in the finest silks the Commonwealth had to offer, but none of it made as much of a difference. It was still a room made to keep the living separated from the dying. A clear window separated Kai from his father. He was squinting up at Kai now, but his eyes was empty as glass. Your Majesty, said Torn, how are you feeling? The emperor's eyes crinkled at his cor their corners. He was not an old man, but the illness had aged him quickly. His complexion was yellow and pallid, and black and red splotches stripped his neck. Stripped his neck. His fingers lifted from the blankets, the closest thing he could manage to a wave. Is there anything you need, Torn asked? A glass of water? Food? An escort 5.3? Kai suggested. Torn cast the prince a disapproving glare, but the emperor wheezed a small chuckle. Kai felt his eyes misting and had to look away. Down at the fingertips pressed into the windowsill. How much longer, he said. Quiet, so his father went here. Torn shook his head. Days, if that. Kai could feel Torn's gaze on him. Understanding, but also harsh. You should be grateful for the time you've have had you should be grateful for the time you have with him most people don't get to see their loved ones when they're taken away and who wants to see their loved ones like this kai looked up his father was struggling to stay awake his eyelids twitching med bring him water the android rolled to the emperor's side and lifted his backrest guiding a glass of water to his lips and wiping away the dribble with a white cloth he did not drink much, but seemed refreshed when he had sunk against into the pillows. Sunk again into the pillows. Kai, I'm here, Kai said, his breath fogging the glass. Be strong. Trust. His words broke into a cough. The medroy held a towel to his mouth, and Kai caught a glimpse of blood against the cotton. He shut his eyes, measuring his breath. When he opened them again, the medro was filling the IV with a clear liquid, something to ease the pain. Kai and Torn watched as the emperor sank into a motionless sank into a motionless sleep, like watching a stranger. Kai loved him, but couldn't quite connect the sick man before him with the vibrant father he had a week ago. One week, a shudder ran through him, and Torn squeezed his shoulder. Kai had forgotten his hand was there. Your Highness? Kai said nothing, staring at his father's chest as it rose and fell. The fingers on his shoulders tightened briefly, then fell away. 
You're going to be emperor, your highness. We must begin you begin to prepare you. We, we've already put it off too long. Too long? One week? Kai pretended not to hear him. His majesty said, you must be strong. You know I will help in any way I can. Torin paused. You're going to be a fine leader. No, I'm not. Kai tugged a hand through his hair, pulling it back from his scalp. He was going to be emperor. The words hang rang hollow. The true emperor was there in that bed. He was an imposter. I'm going to talk to Dr. Erlen, he said, stepping back from the glass. The doctor is busy, your highness. You shouldn't keep the shock in him. I just want to ask if there's been any developments. I'm sure he would tell you immediately if there are. Kai set his jaw and fixed his glaze on Torin. The man who had been his father's advisor since before Kai was born, even now standing in the same room with Torin made him feel like a child, gave him a peculiar urge to be unruly. He wondered if he would ever get over that. I need to feel like I'm doing something, he said. I can't just stand here watching him die. Torrin's eyes dropped. I know, your highness, it's hard for all of us. It's not the same, Kai wanted to say, but held his tongue. Torrin turned away from him, facing the window, and bowed his head. Long live the emperor. Kai repeated the words, whispering around the dryness in his throat. Long live the emperor. They were silent, leaving the visitor's room and walking down the hallway to the elevators. A woman was waiting for them. Kai should have expected it. She was always nearby these days when she was the last person on earth he wanted to see. Sibyl Maria. Head traumatrage to the lunar crown. Exceptionally beautiful, with waist-length black hair and warm honey skin. She wore the uniform befitting her rank and title, a long white coat with a high collar and bell-shaped sleeves, and bordered along the hymns with ruins and hieroglyphs that meant nothing to Kai. Hieroglyphs. Five paces behind her stood her ever-present, ever-silent guard. He was a young man as handsome as Sybil was beautiful, with blonde hair pulled into a low ponytail and sharp features that Kai had yet to see an expression on. Sybil's lips curved as Kai and Torrin approached, but her gray eyes remained cold. Your Imperial Highness, she said with a graceful dip of her head, how fares the Honorable Emperor Riken? When Kai didn't respond, Torrin answered, Not well. Thank you for your concern. I am most displeased to hear that. She sounded about as displeased as a cat who just cornered a mouse. My mistress sends her condolences, and which for a speedy recovery. She fixed her eyes on the prince, and her image seemed to shudder before him like a mirage. Whispers filled his head. Respect and admiration, compassion and concern. Kai tore his gaze from her, silencing the voices. It took a moment for his racing pulse to steady. What do you want? he said. Sybil gestured toward the elevators. A word with the man who would soon be emperor, should the fates deem it so. Kai glanced at Torn, but the face that met him was unsympathetic. Tact, diplomacy, always, especially when it came to the cursed lunars. Sighing, he half turned to the waiting android, third floor. The sensor flashed. Please proceed to elevator C, your highness. They boarded the elevator. Sybil floating into it like a feather upon a breeze. The guard in her last, staying by the door, facing the three of them, as if the thermotrage, oh my god, I can't say that word, sorry, were in, the mortal, were in mortal danger. His icy gaze made Kai uncomfortable, but Sybil seemed to forget the guard was even there. This is a tragic time for his majesty to fall ill, she said. Kai gripped the rail and faced him, faced her, pressing his hatred into the polished wood. Would next month have been more convenient for you? Her patience didn't falter. I speak, of course, 
of the alliance discussion my mistress has been engaging in with the Emperor Riken. We are most eager for an agreement that will suit both Luna and the Commonwealth. Watching her made him feel dizzy, off balance, so he tore her gaze, his gaze away and watched the numbers above the door descend. My father has been attempting to secure an alliance with Queen Lavanna since she first took the throne. She has always declined. He has yet to meet her sensible demands. Kai locked his teeth. Sybil continued, My hope is that, as emperor, you will be better able to see reason, your highness. Kai was silent as the elevator passed floor six, five, four. My father is a wise man. At this time, I have no intention of altering any of his pre previous decisions. I do hope we will be able to come to an agreement. But I'm afraid your mistress would need to lower her very sensible demands. Sybil, Sybil's smile had frozen on her face. Well, she said as the door opened to the third floor, you are young. He dipped his hand, his head, pretending she'd given him a compliment, then face torn. If you have a minute to spare, perhaps you could walk with me to Dr. Erlen's office. You may have questions I've not thought of. Of course, your highness. Neither of them acknowledged the, there's that word again, therm, thermitrage or her guard as they left the elevator, but Kai heard her sugared voice behind him. Long live the emperor before the door shut. He growled. We should have her incarcerated. A lunar ambassador? That's hardly a show of peace. It's better treatment than they would give us. He raked a hand through his hair. Gah, lunars. Realizing that Torn had stopped falling, Kai dropped his hand and turned around. Torn's gaze was heavy, worried. What? I know this is a difficult time for you. Kai felt his hackles rise in self-defense and tried to nudge him back down. This is a good, difficult time for everyone. Eventually, your highness, we will have to discuss Queen Lavanna's and what you intend to do about her. It would be wise to have a plan. Kai stepped closer to Torn, ignoring a group of lab technicians that were forced to swarm around them. I have a plan. My plan is not is to not marry her. Diplomacy be damned. There. End of discussion. Torrin's jaw flexed. Don't look at me like that. She would destroy us. Kyle lowered his voice. She would turn us into slaves. I know, Your Highness. His sympathetic eyes suffused Kai's mounting anger. Please believe me when I say I would not ask it of you, just as I never asked it of your father. Kai backed away and slumped against the corridor wall. Scientists bustled past in their white coats. Androids threads whirled on the aluminum floor. Aluminum. But if anyone had noticed the prince and his advisor, they didn't show it. All right, I'm listening, he said. What's our plan? Your Highness, this is not the place. No, no, you have my attention. Please give me something to think about other than this stupid disease. Torn took a calculated breath. I don't think we need to rewrite our form of fair policies. We'll follow your father's example. For now, we'll hold out for a peace agreement, a treaties. And if she won't sign it, what if she gets tired of waiting and decides to follow through on her threats? Can you imagine a war right now with the plague and the economy? And she would destroy us, and she knows that. If she wanted to start a war, she would have done it by now. Unless she's just biding her time, waiting for us so we, us to get so we, we won't have any choice but to surrender. Kai scratched the back of his neck, watching the bustle of the corridor. Everyone's so busy, so determined in their search for an antidote. If there was an antidote. He sighed. I should have married. If I had already married, Queen Lavana wouldn't even be an issue. She'll have to sign a peace treaty if she wanted peace. A torn silence, he forced himself to look back at the advisor, surprised to find a rare warmth in his face. Perhaps you'll meet a girl at the festival, said Torn. Have a whirlwind romance, a happily ever after. Have no more worries for the rest of your days. 
Kike tried to glare at him, but couldn't maintain it. Torrin so rarely joked. Brilliant idea. Why didn't I think of that? He turned his bracing sh- he turned, bracing his shoulder against the wall, and folded his arms over his chest. Actually, maybe there's one option that you and me, you and my father haven't considered yet. Something that's been on my mind lately. Do tell your highness. He lowered his vo- his voice. Lately, I've been doing a little research. He paused before proceeding on on the lunar air. Torrance was wondering, Your Highness, just hear me out. Kai said, raising his hands to silence Torrin before he could be chastised. He already knew that Torrin would say, Princess Selene, Queen Lavina's niece, was dead. She had died in a fire 13 years ago. There was no lunar air. There are rumors every day, Kai continued, sightings, people claiming they helped her, theories. Yes, we've all heard the theories. You know as well as I, there's no substance to them. But what if they're true? Kai crossed his arms and ducked his head toward Torn, voice trailing to a whisper. What if there's a girl up there who could usurp Lavana? Someone even stronger. Are you listening to yourself? Someone stronger than Lavana? You mean someone like her sister, who had her favorite seamstress feet chopped off, so she would have nothing better to do than sit and make her fine dresses? We're not talking about Queen Shaneri. No, we're talking about her daughter. Kai, the entire bloodline, every last one of them has been greedy, violent, corrupted by their own power. It's in their blood. Believe me when I say that Princess Selene... Even if she were alive, it would be no better. Kai realized his arms were aching from squeezing him so hard, his skin grown white around his fingertips. She can't very well be worse, he said. And who knows, if the rumors are right and she has been on Earth all this time, maybe she would be different. Maybe she would be sympathetic to us. You're basing this wishful thinking on rumors. You've never, they never found a body. Torn pursed his lips in, t- in a thin line. They found what was left of one. It couldn't hurt to do some research, could it? Said Kai, beginning to feel desperate. His heart had been set on the idea for so long. His research harbored so close to his heart. He couldn't bear to think it had all been just wishful thinking, although the possibility had always lingered in the back of his mind. Yes, it could hurt, said Torn. If Lavana was to find out you were considering this, it would destroy our chance at procuring a treaty. We shouldn't even be talking about this here. It's dangerous. Now who's listening to rumors? Your Highness, this is the end of this discussion. Your objective right now must be to prevent a war, not worrying about a phantom lunar princess. What if I can't prevent it? Torn opened his palms, looking weary after the argument. Then a union will fight. Right, excellent plan. I'm so comfort, comforted now that we've had this talk. He turned away and marched blindly toward the labs. Sure, the Earthling Union would fight, but against Luna, they would lose. <laughs>